in Intuitive Surgical came public about two decades ago and is currently up more than 16,000% for its early investors. But is the robotic surgical kingpin still worth investing in today? Let's run it through our frameworks to find out. My name is Brian Feroldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. Thanks to Quarter for sponsoring today's video. Here is the framework that Brian Stoffel uses to invest. Here is the framework that I use to invest. Brian, for those that are unfamiliar, what does Intuitive Surgical do? Intuitive Surgical is the leader, the pioneer really, of robotic surgery. And the whole reason that robotic surgery is so important and growing so fast is that it allows for procedures to be performed in a minimally invasive way. There's less bleeding, there's less cutting. And when that's the case, patients are able to recover faster, they have better outcomes, they spend less time in the hospital, and usually everyone involved saves money because of it. One of my favorite things about this company is its business model. Intuitive sells these huge, expensive, multi-million dollar machines, but that is just the start of the company's revenue. The next revenue stream I think is actually the most important. It is the largest, and those are the instruments that need to be replenished after each procedure. These high margin instruments are ordered over and over again every time the procedures grow for the company. The third way this company makes money is by servicing its machines. Every time the company gets one of its systems placed in the fields, the hospitals sign a contract to have it serviced annually. That's recurring high margin revenue for Intuitive Surgical. So how have they done? Well, I think the most important metric that investors can watch is procedure growth. Because again, every time those procedures grow, those instruments, the high margin instruments are growing along with it. The growth has been very impressive. Obviously, 2020 was a bit of an anomaly because people weren't going into the hospitals for these procedures, which are necessary, but can be put off for some time. And that's what we saw. I expect that we'll see them re-accelerating as we move forward. Let's start with your framework, Brian. The company's mission statement is to expand the potential of physicians to heal without constraints. What do you think? I love it. I think it's simple. It's definitely inspirational. And as we'll get to in a minute, it is optionable. I agree. Moving on to the moat. Do you think the company benefits from the network effect? I do, but it'll take a minute to explain why. As more doctors start using the DaVinci platform, they can tinker more. And as they tinker more, they can experiment with new procedures. If you look at that green section, it's accounted for a large part of the company's growth over the past five, six, seven years. That's U.S. general surgery. That's basically any procedure that doesn't fall under urology or gynecology, and they're growing by 32% per year. I believe that as more doctors tinker with new procedures, the company can get FDA clearance for those procedures to be adopted more widely. And as that happens, that draws in even more doctors because they realize that they can use it for all these different procedures. You could also make the argument that there's a network effect from the physician side too. Once you get trained on this system, you can put on your resume that you are a Da Vinci certified physician. You could also make this an argument that there's a network effect from the physician side too. Once you became trained on how to use the Da Vinci system to do, perform surgical procedures, you become more attractive to employers around the world. So there is a network effect there too. All right, do we think there are switching costs involved? I do, and it's actually a nice segue from what you just covered, Brian. Doctors spend years working on this platform. When that's the case, they're loath to switch to another one. But this involves hospitals too. If a hospital buys a machine outright, it costs over a million dollars. When you put that amount of sunk costs into a machine, you are sure that you are going to use it in the future. So I believe both for physicians and hospitals, there are very high switching costs. I couldn't agree with you more. Do we think that intuitive benefits from a low cost advantage? I don't think it really comes into play, no. I think they're probably the low cost producer of these robotic surgical systems, but like you, I don't think it's much of a moat. How about intangibles? Absolutely. This company definitely has brand value. If you look at the numbers, we see that they've got all the peer review articles, over 7 million procedures performed globally, and 5,500 machines distributed throughout the world. There is definite brand value here. I have personally driven by hospitals and seen signs on the road that say robotic surgery, Da Vinci systems performed here. I think the brand name Da Vinci does resonate within the medical and patient communities. Moving on to optionality. What do you see, Brian? Well, I don't necessarily see them getting out of minimally invasive surgery, but if you look at the applications for their technology, there's a ton. They started with urology. They moved on to gynecology. After that, they worked on hernia repairs. They've worked on things like bariatric procedures. They've even got something that helps detect lung cancer, their ion system now. What's next? I don't know. But as we talked about before, 
more tinkering will lead to more procedures in the future. I totally agree. I think the company has a tremendous amount of optionality built into it. Moving on to financials. What do we see as of June 30th? This is a really strong company. They've got over $6 billion in cash. They've got absolutely no long-term debt and their free cash flow is growing very quickly. It's nearing $2 billion. If hard times were to hit, this would help them get stronger relative to any competition they might have. Financially, this company is in impeccable shape. Moving on to concentration, any risk to be aware of? None that anyone can see. All right, skin in the game. What do we see for Glassdoor ratings? Dr. Gary Guthart is one of the highest rated CEOs among publicly traded companies. He's done a phenomenal job. Employees give stellar reviews for the company. Great. How about the founder? Well, the founder of Intuitive Surgical is Dr. Frederick Mole. He stayed with the company for a while, but he's more of a serial entrepreneur and he's now working with Johnson & Johnson, so he is no longer involved. How about ownership? What do we got? Well, because this is not a founder-led company and it's a company that's been around for 20 years, ownership is actually quite low. It's less than 1%. That being said, the value of what all the insiders own is about a billion dollars as of this taping, but that is going to be a mark against the company on my framework. Well, before we get to the final scores, we wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor, Quarter. With Quarter, you get frictionless access to conference calls, investor presentations, transcripts, and earnings reports from markets around the world straight to your pocket for no cost. Let me say that again. Quarter is free. Quarter now covers companies from 15 markets around the world and more are being added all the time. And Quora just rolled out a new feature that allows users to leave reactions to conference calls while they're listening. That helps them to have their voice heard. Visit the app store of your choice today and give Quora a try for free. That's Q-U-A-R-T-R. -R. Thanks, Quora, for sponsoring the video. Brian, let's start taking this company to the anti-fragile framework. What do you give it for mission? I give them full credit. It checked all three boxes. Great. Moving on to Moat. Well, we've got the network effect. I didn't give them full point for switching costs, but most, and I gave them a point for their brand value. That comes out to four and a half points. Great score. Optionality? Again, I don't see them moving out of robotic surgery, but there's so many different ways it can be applied. So I gave them two and a half out of three points. Moving out to financials. Really strong balance sheet, cash flow, full point. And concentration? None to worry about. Zero is the best you can do. Glass door ratings? Plus one. Founder? Dr. Moll's no longer there. Zero. And ownership? I do take a point off, being a little harsh probably, but it's below 1%. For consistency, I understand why you did this, but almost having a billion dollars on the line, I think the ownership is okay. But that gives it a total score of 10, which is definitely in your robust category. Yes, it should be no surprise this is the stock that I own in my own portfolio. Let's move on to my framework. So financially, I gave this company a 16 out of 17. For potential, I only gave it 11 out of 18. Part of that is because operating leverage is behind this company, so profit growth isn't going to grow much faster than revenue moving forward. For the quality of, quality of customers, very high. I gave them a 7 out of 10. Revenue quality is outstanding too. I gave it an 8 out of 10. Management and culture was very good score 11 out of 14 and not only has the stock thumped the market over the last five years and since inception this company has a history of beating its own expectations and occasionally using its huge cash hoard to buy back stock for the gauntlet i subtracted zero points there are no major risk here that i saw add all that together and intuitive surgical gets an 82 on my quality score this is a very high quality business yes and i'm almost a little bit surprised that it's only a 10 on mine but as you said for consistency's sake we took points off for the ownership, if they got a point for it, it would have been a 12. It would have been in that green section. Either way, both you and I agree this is a very high quality company that we have each owned for a long time. So we're going to hold ourselves accountable by putting this into our bullish scorecards. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Brian's out.